The concept of personalized medicine has been around for certainly for a while, but if and 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 certainly it is somewhat of a buzzword now. But um, <clears throat> there's no doubt that um, we have a greater awareness of the diversity of cancer. This is uh, quite daunting. If you look at the number of mutations required to have a cancer phenotype in a cell in the range of 90 to 100, but if you compare patients with in breast cancer or colon cancer or other tumors, there's very few overlap among the, the abnormalities. So that's very relevant when it comes to targeted therapies. Because previously, so far, in modern oncology, which started with nitrogen mustard in 1948 with the declassification of warfare agent, we have now hundreds of, not hundreds, but um, several dozens of conventional cytotoxic agents that basically kill the cells by affecting the DNA or affecting some central metabolism in the cell, but not really targeted, somewhat broad, same mechanism across the board, regardless of the type of cancers. These small molecules that we have now, and more than a thousand new molecules in the pipeline as we speak, are really affect a very much a small subset of patients that carry a specific defect. And some of the other patients might have um, the same tumor, but do not carry the same defect that drives the cell. So that's where the difference will come, is that using these small molecules in the right subset of patients, so having a rationale or reason to do a clinical trial in that specific population of patients, will make the trials hopefully a little bit more molecularly relevant, and that's a first step towards personalized medicine to really affect the outcome of patients.